Why did you move to Poland? That's a that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Um, so there there are a couple aspects about it. Uh, Elizabeth's family is from from Poland, and we wanted to spend uh, kind of like our last summer before it's settling down in a like a solid place, like throwing roots in the ground in New York or Boston, in somewhere that we that we really love and care about and means something to us. So we chose we chose Capital, and uh, we love it. And then there are a couple projects that I'm working on with uh, EMI's um, European divisions, where it made a lot of sense to be here for communication reasons. And the food's great. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I had a question. Uh, yes. like working with so many celebrities, you kind of became a celebrity yourself, right? <laughs> uh, I, hope, I hope not. Yeah, yeah well, in general, the uh, question is how, do you make, how did you make your first step, I guess? Now you're kind of hired agents and stuff, I guess. But uh, uh, before, how did you start? How, how did you get your first contract with, uh, you know, like, meet Jada kind of? So that, a lot of that, because I started early, I put in all, like, those hard years during my youth. So the story that I tell very early on is the Slick Shoes story, where Lanny Slick Shoes was, you know, step one to then landing a larger client. And then having that client under my portfolio meant that I would have work being seen by other, you know, record labels. They would see that and contact me, and then I'd get that record label. So yeah. more of, like, a step to step to step. Like, without, like... A, I guess thinking about it, like if I didn't get that slip shoes project, maybe I wouldn't, maybe I wouldn't be here. Maybe I wouldn't go down that. Maybe I wouldn't have started the company. I mean, who knows? So that's really, really kind of the, the luck of the equation was that project. I feel, and I, I don't have an agent. My my parents aren't high level celebrity agents. I mean, my mom drives a school bus, and my my dad's a plumber. Um, and so, yeah, no agent, no manager. <laughs> so do you think the, um, the, the chance, the element of chance is a big, I mean, it has a big impact on, on what happened to your life in the career? Or do you think it's, there is chance, but it's like more like serendipity or something that you're working, you're on your path and, you know, with uh, a certain amount of, of goodwill and hard work, yeah. things will just happen because they will. Like, what's That's your take on the... The, the American dream? Or no, no, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you think it's, there's more chance or there's more um, well, hard work and just, like, making sure you're opening as many doors as possible? Yeah, like, I think What would be the, like, the, you know, what would be your... My take on that? that? So my take on if I didn't get the Slick Shoes project early mm -hmm. on and had continued on that route working hard, producing high quality work, are you, are you asking that? Yeah. What, I, I mean, I don't know, because you think about it, like in, let's open that up even to like the music industry, or really anything, startups, like how many versions of Twitter and Foursquare have there been, how many alternatives to iTunes have they been that just yeah. were incredibly well done, maybe even better than what's the mainstream, uh, I guess, mainstream adapted version mm -hmm. uh, that just fell flat on, the, flat on their face. I think there's mm -hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of luck, a lot of chance. I think more than anything, you should work hard and you should continue on that route, but there's really no certainty in anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the, in a way that's kind of the beauty of it, mm -hmm. is I could have worked that hard and, and not gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, I guess that's how things are. And what do you do to convince people to your ideas? What do I, sorry? <coughs> to convince people to your ideas. To convince people of my yeah. ideas. They, they want something else and you want to make them, to take the thing you invite, you, um, you make. How do you convince them, let's say you present a design for something, right? Is that you yeah. And like, how do you convince them that this design is better than what they want? That's, that always varies from client to client. There are some, clients of mine that are very set in their ways and they'll pick something and they don't want any discussion about it. And then there are clients that I'll feel that they're loose about some topics, so I'll convince them by showing them other uh, examples of that being very successful, other examples of it being, uh, you know, highly applauded and let them decide from there. Because I mean, as the, as the uh, company, I have to be a good listener, so I have to listen to what my clients want and try to accommodate. So it really just depends on the client. I feel like you have a 
very compelling idea and you keep fighting and fighting with it, hopefully you can get through the thick skin of the situation. And I feel that that's often the case. Is the only times that I will bring it, like if they're like, move this here, move this there, I'll be like, okay. But if it's like a really fundamental aspect of the website that I feel um, I have a more uh, appropriate, effective idea, then I'll push as hard as I can for it. And um, I guess that's, that's the one short of it. Uh, I got another one. Uh, I, I tend to, uh, I used to do what, what you do, and uh, I don't know about uh, US, certainly not. Uh, in Poland, services, uh, clients, uh, websites, it's, it's not a good business. Uh, I see people uh, switch to products, mm -hmm. they, uh, they start startups or whatever they call it, the companies, right? Yeah. And, uh, People tend to make products, they, they, they are more stable, they make m much more money out of it in Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly your example is uh, that in the States, yeah. still there is a uh, balance between services and products. Yeah, I mean, ultimately okay. I'd love to move more into the software as a service yeah. route, coming up with some sort of product that services the clients that I have now, but that has a lot more scalability. Like right now I'm an agency, so yeah, exactly. the service agency, yeah. building things as needed. Um, I've had a couple of, of ideas. I haven't brought any of them to that to that level where I've released them. But no, you, you make a very good point that is that you have to. I mean, it all depends on your goals. Like, if your goals are to build something up, sell it for, get it overvalued, and then sell it for tens of millions of dollars, then definitely you have to have some sort of some sort of product, highly scalable product mm -hmm. that opens up to the to the wider market as compared to service or agency work. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I just haven't found that idea yet, but I know that's the route that I want to take in the future. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, and I remember about 10 years ago, I was 17, and I was on that message board, and there was that kid, he was 12, and I hated that kid because he, <laughs> he knew everything that I didn't. Uh, that day, uh, I, I used to program in PHP back yeah. then, and uh, he was like a guru. Uh, he was 12, and I hated that, so... Uh, that that brings me to the question: How do you? How, what's your take on the young kids now? Or it doesn't matter now nowadays that uh, you're young or you're uh, old. Or <laughs> no, 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 no. I wasn't that. I wasn't that. Tall. That was all Polish. <laughs> I wasn't that tall. Okay. Um, so, so do, is it? Uh, because I, I feel that I did a little research on you, and uh, every every <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really easy. You've got links on your website, so yeah. I just click on every one of them. Cool. Uh, every now and then, uh, people say that you are young, and then, then that you are entertainer, right? And yeah. uh, I guess nowadays it's it's not critical to be young or be old. It's just, yeah. It's just you have to have an idea and the courage to. To do it. So, what's your take on that? Because you're so still young. What's my take on what's my take on age? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I don't think age has anything to do with the quality of what one is producing. I think there are different experiences and different points of view that older person is going to have. Let's say there are more fo formal take or um, different traits about them when making decisions, deciding on what works mm -hmm. best. Whereas we we grew up with the internet. We use the internet to communicate to find out anything, and so we have a very different way of looking at it. I think it's a really exciting thing, the generation to come um, is going to have an incredible advantage because they're, like Google, I believe they had some sort of classroom where they were making it super easy for uh, kindergartners to sixth graders to build Android applications. Yeah, so you think about like what we were doing, if you had computer classes, the computer classes that I took during high school were type to learn or whatever they're called, where you just type, where you, have, you don't learn anything about computers. Maybe you learn Excel, or maybe you learn uh, Word, how to yeah. format, how to underline, very simple things compared to like what kids are doing now. I think that the next breed of startups are gonna be very feisty, very ferocious, and it's exciting. It's so exciting to think about that. Yeah, we have kids. Yeah, we we are all in all that. Uh, yeah, kids, yeah. So possibly we're the, are we the old ones now? Like there are there, absolutely there are eleven year olds that are creating companies that have ten million dollars in revenue and that's that's awesome. First of all, that's awesome. Yeah. Um so yeah, I think it's gonna be very exciting. Cool. So you mentioned you used to take all the 
uh, different projects you were asked for? Uh, is it still the same? Because you mentioned no. that you're not a print. So, yeah, because at the beginning you said it was, it turned out to be a different business, and I'm yeah. sure it was. But, like, when did you realize that, like, you're not no longer taking things that you don't particularly want to specialize in? Well, I kind of go through my head, like, a list of things about a project that makes it attractive. Obviously, there's mm -hmm. the budget amount, who it's for, what they're looking to achieve, timeline, technologies, mm -hmm. what type of team I'd be working with. Mm -hmm. And if it's missing, like, a significant amount of those items, um, mm -hmm. then I won't take it on. Like, mm -hmm. I've been offered some really big projects for Fortune 500 companies and, and big uh, healthcare companies mm -hmm. and... I uh, had to turn them down because I felt that it wasn't a right match for my company. I feel we could have done an excellent job, but it would be a case where the client wouldn't want to hear the ideas. They wouldn't want to achieve greatness with with their online presence or whatever we're building for them. Mm -hmm. And so I just said, okay, I, I'll have to sit this one out. I don't think mm -hmm. I can take this project on. Mm -hmm. And how big is your team then? Um, well, it's a virtual company of about 10 developers. But are you still doing all the designs? Or? I, good question. I actually still do all the designs. Uh, there's maybe like one or two projects a year that I don't design. Or maybe I don't feel like I'm the appropriate style of designer, but I still do all the design and everything that needs to so get there. So the concept and everything is like, you're always the author and developer is just to Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the relationship an architect and a construction company would have. Like, um, this is making the designs, the schematics, this is going to do this, this is going to do that, and then I hand it over to my my builders, my construction group, and they do that aspect of it. How old are you? 12 years old. <laughs> 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forum kids. Um, <laughs> most, mostly between like 20 and 26 years old. Are you expensive? Um... In Um That's a good question. It all depends on which type of clients coming to me. Like to the music industry, I'm, I stay very competitive price-wise, and they come to me for specific reasons or the relationships that we have with them, ongoing with specific clients. But to let's say small business, very expensive. To agency, maybe a really good deal. Are there any graphic designers that you admire? Uh, that's a good In question. In Poland. In Poland. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying. Uh, let me think. Apathy. Yeah. Um, graphic designers in Poland. I actually do I'm have a list. Of my, my question. No, I, have, I do have a list. I, I do have a list of a couple. I'll actually, three of you, maybe, of three or four different graphic designers in Poland that I that I love the work of. Uh, I remember early on, I loved, and he's not a, a user interface designer, but a designer in the broader respect. I love the work of Chuck Anderson, No Pattern. I think he's in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And um, I, there's actually this firm in, in, in Le Ville, not Le Vue, um, no, I'll say Le Vue, in Le Vue, called mm -hmm. Kipa, that I've done some work with, that I think they're awesome designers. They create a really playful aesthetic. And then there's this firm, the firm that built um, Carbon Made, I think they're called Eat, Eat Drink Media, um, that do very playful, very exciting user experience work. Um, so those, those stuff that's happening at those are some designers that I really, that I really enjoy the work of. You told us to be about the productivity. You know, there are a lot of tasks that you are doing, productivity. I want to ask a little bit about that, if you can tell us more about you know, how, how you organize your day, how you, how you take all the tasks you know, during the high school program. During high school? For example, you know, even now. Like, I guess if I, so in high school, um, when, do, when does school start? So you wake up at 6, you go to school, and then you get out of school at like 3 or 4 o'clock. So then from like 4 o'clock till... <laughs> 8 o'clock, I would do business work, squeeze in my homework for an hour, and then, like, if I couldn't finish my homework in an hour, then I didn't finish my homework. Uh, and would copy off of someone the next day. No, no. Um, but I felt like I was doing a tremendous amount of business work, more than even my academics. Um, and that's kind of, like, what my high school years looked like. One, it's funny high school stories, one day I had to take a really important conference call. 
and I convinced my history teacher to let me go to the principal's office. And um, the principal was just looking at me after, like, what the hell does this kid even do? We thought he sold drugs. That's why he has that car. Um, but, uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of what my schedule looked like um, during high school. Now, I try to... I try to wake up at like 10 o'clock, sleep's important to me, and start my work day around 11 or noon, and then work till 5, 6, but throughout, throughout the evening I'll check in on emails. I'm still trying to master like if I'll have like a solid policy on like no computers after a certain time, um, but because of the time difference here, like I'm getting, there's a nine hour time difference between here and Los Angeles, so some of my clients I'm getting emails really, really late in the day, 10 o'clock, and I'll have to out of respect to the, to the client and keeping things moving along, I uh, have to tend to that at, at a very late hour here. Um, but I, I feel um, I do have a good um, life-work balance. Like I, I don't feel overstressed. I feel really happy with what I'm doing. There was a time, more in the high school years, when you're experimenting with what, what uh, schedule works best for you, that I would over, overwork myself undersleep and it was really I felt de detrimental to my well-being because you're exhausted you're not as productive but that was because of school so I blame it all on school <laughs> <laughs> that's it <funny. laughs> so why didn't you leave it the school high school yeah you, you could you know you could leave it and, and, and stay only outside well yeah. dropping out of high school in the, in the US probably anywhere in maybe any Actually, interesting statistic, Poland has the highest high school graduation rate, one of the highest in the world, I believe, which is really interesting. So I'd imagine, as a social norm, it's very, very looked down upon if you drop out of high school. I feel it is really important to um, you know, build those skills during those years. I think it's one of those things that you have to do. I don't know if I'd ever advocate dropping out of high school, but I mean, there's been really, the only other case I can think of, someone um, that dropped out of high school and became extremely successful just in like the modern um, startup situation would be David Carp of Tumblr dropped out of high school, I think at 14 or 15 years old, was involved in a startup in uh, Japan and then came back and started Tumblr. So uh, there are some people that I think are extraordinarily intelligent and talented and it will work for them, um, but generally would not advocate dropping out because that's like point. Zero 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 one percent of the population that will have that success without those fundamental tools. Okay, thank you. How did you learn how to design? Did you take some classes or courses? Or? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't take courses on on design. They weren't offered in in high school, and I didn't really take design courses in college either. Um, my interest as a child um, included or were mainly based around art. Like I was really into art. I spent so much of my time drawing and sketching. And in school, I would make comic books. I would do stories. I would enter stories in like competitions and, and things of that sort. Because I was really, uh, I just loved illustrating. And so naturally, when the computer came along, I translated my my love for illustration into design. And then design for commercial purposes became website design. Um, you said that part of your success was that you got in early, when, yes. when things were just starting. And I'm just curious, what do you see now that is at that a similar stage now as, as this was then, when you were getting going? Tend as to... the, the internet in general? Or... Oh, well, kind of, no, because you, you, you've occupied a niche of, of yeah, you know, yeah. music industry videos. Is there, any, uh, so website, is there something that's kind of bubbling up now that you think... You know, your entrepreneurial 11, 12, 13-year-old well, should be heading. Yeah, I think there are going to be a lot of young, young uh, people building mobile applications. I mean, even on I think um, CNN International did a thing on iPhone developers a year ago. It was like an hour-long special, and they showed you know the the iconic ones that everyone knows about. But then they showed like here's an 11-year-old that built an application for flashcards. And now sells it on the on the uh, the app store, and so I think that uh, will that ever become something that's taught in school or nurtured? Probably not, but I think that kids will pick it up because they'll see, wow, like on my phone I'm using these applications. How do I build one for myself for some idea that I have? Um, and I think that's the direction education as a whole is going. And like, there's a big movement 
Actually, I read something in Krakow. There's a movement to have entrepreneurs nurture and mentor uh, high school students. So even even here, it's becoming more and more of a thing. Like in the U.S., teaching entrepreneurship will go beyond. Oh, kids have uh, lemonade stands, which is kind of the cliche. Like the kid, when they're six years old, creates a lemonade stand. It's going to be less of that and more of uh, let's think critically about things. So if there's a problem, how will we solve that? What technologies will be used? And I think kids will be able to figure that out. Um, and in the form of mobile, uh, I, I definitely think that there will be more and more young people building apps. Like there are kind of like wissy wig applications to build applications. And these are things that um, you know a ten year old can figure out in, in an hour. And if they can build an applica application, sorry, I almost said applicate. If they can build an <laughs> if they can uh, build an application and find some sort of commercial um, feasibility or route for that, a market for it, then I think we'll be seeing more and more young app developers. I mean, in challenge is managing um, um, a virtual company with like, ten people. If, do you like? Do you any? Do you ever run into problems? Or like, yeah, I suppose you do. Like, what would be the problems? Have, have you? No. Have you ever met them? Have I ever what? Met them. Um, <laughs> I yeah, I've met one or two. Like, I had a couple of developers in the U.S. that I said I knew and met would hire. I've met one in Warsaw that I've hired. Um, but. I honestly like the ability to keep things as frictionless and as seamless as possible. Like that's really uh, why I love working the way I do. Like I, so back home I bought part of an office building with the idea of um, filling it with entrepreneurs and having this big renaissance and stuff like that. And some of the companies that were in there, I find myself being distracted. But I think that's being distracted by going and be like, hey, John, how was your day? Blah, 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 what did you do this weekend? Like, I think there's so many inefficiencies in having a, um, having a real office. And I know that what the, the, I'm trying to think of some people that have, uh, 37 signals? 30, yeah, yeah, 37 signal guys say a, say a lot about that, like how it kills productivity, their employees are, I don't, I'm just throwing it out there, I don't remember yeah. what it was, 30, 40% more productive yeah. if they're working digitally, and how many hours a day people waste on unnecessary interactions and stuff like that. I think it's obviously human to have those interactive interactions, <laughs> but in, in, the work in the workplace it's a bit different. But like on, on the flip side of telling you like what makes having outsourcing and having a digital team efficient, like it's awesome to walk into your offices and see like this community, and I think when you're building more product, when you're building more product where you have to think about things and have iterations and have a team to brainstorm, it makes complete sense to have a team. When you're doing more service or agency where you know you hands the construction team and it doesn't involve a lot of uh, thinking on their side, just kind of execution, then it's efficient. I guess it's similar to us. If we have clients overseas, who, mm -hmm. I guess it's, I mean, it's their the same assumption they come from. I mean, but to, on the other hand, many people say that they are not efficient if they're work, working alone. I mm -hmm. mean, they are efficient for some time, but in yeah. the long run, they are just available, like, kind of. I, I guess, yeah, it depends on how self motivated mm -hmm. you are and how independent you are. Like, I remember in grade school when the report cards would come out, they'd always say, like, independent, self starter, blah, blah, blah things like that because I find myself thriving when I was working alone because I feel in a group environment there's always the, the person that's uh, lagging behind and that they're not contributing. There's always the lazy person. There's, there are all those circumstances. So unless you have like the ideal team or it's necessary to have that team, um, <laughs> um, it, could, it, could, I mean, it can go in either direction, but um, I don't... Like, obviously and, and naturally, we all procrastinate and we all, you know, divert our attention to things less important during our work day. But as long as you're hitting, you know, you're hitting your deadlines and you're, you know, meeting the request of your clients, it's not really too big of an issue. There's just, I think it's a, it's a underlying character trait. If you have it, then it's cool to work by yourself. If you need a team around you, then it just, it's, people are built differently. Thank you for the great talk. Thank you.